Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another rehaul video for you. So if you haven't seen one of my rehaul videos, that's where I go back to my haul from about a year ago and talk about all the items I picked up and what I think of them now a year later. So this haul was after I got back from Scotland and uh, being there for a month with my husband who was there working for six months. And so I was really excited to try a lot of the brands that are available there that aren't available here. So the first thing I picked up was my Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum in the shade Vanilla. I bought two of these. This is the first one of that one and it's in my project pan right now. So I'm working on using it up. I love this foundation. I'm totally happy to have a second bottle. It's a really great color match for me, I think. And I just really love it. So I do not regret this at all and I would definitely repurchase it. Um, I have no idea if it's cruelty free or anything like that, but I just, I, I definitely recommend this if you, if it's a bit available to you. With that purchase, um, since I bought two, or I think I bought one for someone else, I don't remember, but I got a free bronzer and a lip crayon, and I cluttered both of those. The lip crayon was this very light, peachy, creamy shade that did not look good on me, and then the bronzer was uh, shimmery, and I'm not really into shimmery bronzers, so I got rid of both of those things. The next things I bought were from the brand Soap and & Glory, and a lot of these things are now available at Ulta. Originally, when I bought these there last year, the makeup wasn't really available in the States. So, if I knew what I know now, that all this stuff would be available a year later, I definitely wouldn't have bought as much of it, but... I mean, there's no way for me to know that. But the first thing I picked up was this powder. It's the pressed powder I carry in my purse with me right now. It's called One Heck of a Blot. And I really like this. I think the packaging is cute and it just makes me happy when I pull it out. So I don't regret this. And I'm actually at my goal for powders now. So it definitely wasn't something that I went overboard on. It was a pretty smart thing to buy. I think when I wanted to try out everything it, of all the things to buy, powder was a good one to purchase at the time. The next item I got from Soap & Glory was the Kick-Ass Concealer, and this is in the shade Light. And so I really haven't used this very much. I've used it a couple times, but there's three products actually. So on the bottom there's a peachy kind of color and then a more tan color of concealer. And I tried them before, but it's been a long time. I don't really remember what I thought of them, but I think I thought they were fine. And then there's also a powder with a little powder puff in the top. So I thought this was a cute little thing. It has everything you need in it. And I definitely want to use it, but I'm trying to pan some other concealers right now. And I definitely didn't need this concealer. And on top of that concealer, I picked up this concealer from Collection. I got this one in the shade Warm and Medium, which is maybe too dark for me. I really haven't played with it too much, but I've heard a lot of great things about this concealer. It actually might be okay. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about this concealer on YouTube, but I have so many concealers right now. It really wasn't a smart thing to buy not one, but two concealers. But, you know, the jury's still out on if I like them because I really haven't been able to use them enough to form an opinion. Back to Soap and Glory, I picked up two brow products, which also, like, what was I thinking? Why did I get two? One would have been just fine. The first one was the Archery, um tint and shaping pencil. So on one side there is a marker and the other side there's a pencil. And I heard the pencil is like really good, the marker isn't. Um, I've used it a couple times. It's fine, but it's really nothing special. So I wouldn't repurchase it, but it wasn't, it's not terrible and I definitely will use it out. The next one was this brow product. This has a brow shaper on one side and a highlighter on another. And I actually just used the highlighter today and I do kind of like it. Um, I just kind of put it on uh, before I hit record just for fun, but I think this will work really well. I think I would prefer this one to the other one. The color of the brow pencil I think is cooler. The other one's a little bit warmer, so I think I'll like this one a little better. But once again, I, I've only used it one time. All this stuff is just sitting here waiting for me to get through other products, and it really, they weren't the smartest decisions, I think. But in terms of, you know, how much I could have bought, I think I did okay. Um, there's two more things I bought in Scotland from Makeup Revolution. They were both eyeshadow palettes. And these were pretty cheap. I think they were like six pounds maybe, I don't remember. But the first one I bought because 
it's really stupid, but I bought it for the meme. <laughs> it's called the What You Waiting For palette, and that's one of Gwen Stefani's solo songs. And then all the uh, shade names are lines from the song, and I, you know, it's definitely not licensed or anything. It's, it's totally random. I have no idea why this exists, but it was, I just couldn't resist picking it up. So I actually did get some really good use out of this at the end of last year when I used up all the lighter shades in my Lorac Pro. So there were a lot of, I mean, I can see like, I used this one, this one, this one, this one quite a bit. Obviously I haven't really touched the mattes, but I've swatched everything in this palette and I think it, it's a pretty good quality. So I'm definitely, you know, okay with purchasing this even if it was for a pretty stupid reason. There are shades in here I like and I don't reach for it a ton since I was using it um, during my Pan That palette but I probably will throw it into a one month one palette at some point. The other one I bought was a little bit out there but I'm still glad I, I purchased it. I don't really use it a lot but it is this Ultimate Color Chaos palette and it's kind of like for me like the electric palette. I, there have been times where I've been tempted by the electric palette and having this has kept me from ever being tempted by it again. I've used it a couple times for pops of color like on the lower lash line and things like that and I think it's fun to have these fun shades just to play around with and so I'm glad that the bright shades I do have in my collection are in this very cheap palette that I didn't spend a lot of money on. I also purchased something else from Slip and Glory. I bought the Orange Gasm Body Wash. They didn't sell that scent in the States at the time, but I believe they do have that at Ulta now, and I do really like it, and I would repurchase it. Right now I'm using another Soap and Glory Body Wash, um, just the regular original scent, but I would definitely consider getting the Orange Gasm one when I need a new body wash. Then I had a lipstick from MAC. It was Creme de Nude and it was from the Wash and Dry collection. I got that in the airport duty free store and I ended up selling it because I just didn't like the shade on me or the formula I guess on me. I bought it because it was a dupe of Urban Decay's Walk of Shame which I do really like and it just wasn't the same and it just seemed to settle in my fine lines and it didn't look as good on me. Um, just the tone of it was a little bit different. So I did sell that and now I do actually own Walk of Shame. I bought this when the Revolution lipsticks were half off. So I definitely regret the MAC purchase. It was kind of an impulsive thing. My husband and I were on our way to Paris and he made us get to the airport very, very early and I was kind of in a bad mood. And he's like, well, why don't you do some shopping? I'll buy you some makeup if you want something so I kind of felt like I had to get something um, because he was offering to buy it and I definitely don't think I made the wisest choice although I thought I was because it was something I had researched at the time I knew it was a dupe for the shade and it was a little cheaper and the wash and dry packaging was really pretty so I was like oh why not get this but um, I don't know what else I would have gotten if I had chosen something else I was kind of looking at another lipstick which I definitely didn't need so I kind of regret that purchase but I felt I also feel like you know I probably wouldn't have made it if I wasn't urged to by my husband not that I'm like blaming him for buying makeup but um, you know it is what it is I bought it I tried it didn't like it but now someone else is enjoying it so that was everything I bought in the UK. When I got home, I had ordered a few, or I had ordered one thing and I also received an influencer box. So the thing I ordered was from ColourPop. It was the Coffee Break with Danny Metamorphosis quad. And I only have one shade from that quad anymore. So it came with two transforming shades. They are both very sheer duochrome shades that look different on different eyeshadow bases underneath. So you can kind of put them on top of any other eyeshadow color and they will kind of transform them into something else. So the other one was white and it had more of a purple to pink shift. It kind of changed depending on what color was underneath. And I really don't like pinks and purples. I believe I decluttered that one. I believe I gave it to Kristen Papulis in my Elfster swap, but I'm not 100% sure because I know she really likes purple but I don't have that one anymore just because that shade didn't work for me and it wasn't something I was going to reach for. This is the other Transformer shade and this is the one I do like a lot. I actually have hit pan on it as you can see in the middle. This is the shade Kindness and here's a swatch of it. It's kind of similar to the MAC um, Blue Brown pigment, pigment or that shade in the uh, 
to call the Wet n Wild palette the Comfort Zone palette, but it is a little different because it is kind of more sheer and you kind of put it on top of something else. So I have used this before. It is kind of glittery, so I only usually wear it, you know, if I'm going out or something at night because I'm not a big glitter person, at least for daytime. But I did like this enough to keep it. The other two shades in the quad, there wasn't anything wrong with them. They were both one was a matte, and I just didn't like the formula as much in the ColourPop formula. Um, it was a lot harder, and I just was never reaching for it. I just felt like it was very similar to a lot of other eyeshadows I have in powder form, and I just like to work with those better. Um, I wasn't really sure, like, I didn't really like using the ColourPop one in combination with powder eyeshadows. So I decluttered that one, and then I also decluttered the dark brown. I think that was more of a satin shade. And, you know, it was fine too, but I just felt like I was never reaching for them. Um, I, I usually, the only one I reached for was this topper, and I put this on top of powder eyeshadows just fine. But the other two, I just didn't, they weren't working for me. So I decluttered them. I believe I sold both of them, and they are gone from my collection now. And I definitely regret buying that quad. I definitely didn't need it. It was mostly because I used to love Coffee Break with Danny. She was the first YouTube channel I got really into and kind of pulled me into watching YouTube beauty videos. So I wanted to support her, but it was definitely something I didn't need and I probably should have just resisted from it and saved my money. So I also received an Influencer Vox box that had a few makeup items, which I will talk about. The first one was a CoverGirl Outlast lipstick, and the formula on that was actually pretty nice, but the color I received was really bad on me. It was kind of a cool toned mauve color, and it's it just, cool toned pinks do not look good on me, and it was no exception to that, so I got rid of that one. The other thing I received was the CoverGirl Stay Luminous Foundation, and it was a good color match for me. I've used it a few times. I, I like it. I'm not a huge luminous dewy skin person, but that foundation, it's not overboard, it's not too much. So I do like it. I have it in my drawer. So I do like it. I have it right here. I'll probably move on to this once I'm done painting my Bourjois Healthy Mix foundation. I also received this primer. It's called the Nano Blur Primer. It's kind of the same idea as like the Professional, but it says you're actually supposed to put it on after your makeup and pat it on top. So this is what it looks like. It's just like a mattifying pore filler, I guess. I've used it a few times. It's fine. I don't really notice a huge difference, but I will probably try to use this up at some point, but right now I'm working on some other primers. And then finally I received the Neutrogena Hand Cream. I used it a few times and it was it was nice, but it was also a little weird. It was a kind of a clear, it looked like an ointment almost, and but it sunk in pretty quickly and I, I believe it left my hands feeling pretty soft. But my, um, I actually got that box when I was at home at my parents' house in between coming back from Scotland and moving to my internship and my mom saw it and she really wanted it. So I ended up giving it to her because she said that she wanted it and I already have a bunch of other hand creams so I don't have that one either. So that was everything in my haul last July. Thank you guys so much for watching. I Let me know if you've tried any of these things, what you think of them, or if you've done one of these videos lately because I love to watch them. My next uh, rehaul video will be in September. It was my birthday haul, so look forward to that and I will see you in the next one. Bye!